Okay guys, so this is another mailbag and this is an, another massive pile which I managed to you know, purchase in the 11.11 um, .11 AliExpress sale. And actually it's not all of them because um, it, it was quite strange because I placed, I don't know, like two or three, well, I, I placed a couple of orders uh, on that weekend and a couple of more orders uh, on the week after. And then a lot of stuff started arriving very, very soon. And then there is a lot of stuff which I guess it would just arrive in, in January. I'm not really sure why, but um, I guess there are some sellers or there are warehouses that are packing much quicker than others. And um, yeah, so I got a lot of stuff and I didn't get a lot other. But I think regardless, probably what you see here is like, I mean, it looks a lot, but in terms of... Um, you know, cost is not really much. I think it's probably, it wouldn't be more than like 200 bucks or maybe 250, something like that. And um, yeah, just let me know how much you spent on the Black Friday sale or 11.11 uh, .11 AliExpress sale. Uh, I think I managed to, you know, restrict myself to some extent, but um, just looking at the number of stuff, I might be getting, you know, a honorary green card from the US embassy or the US government that I'm really good, you know, consumer guy and uh, spending a lot. And of course, there will be more stuff that are coming in uh, uh, probably in January, which I will add in a new video. So let's go through all of these. And I'm not really sure what order I should do, but uh, maybe what I should do first is this uh, ultrasonic uh, cleaner. So I was thinking about getting something like this for a while. And I'm, and I'm seeing m much of these Weaver stuff uh, on YouTube. So I'm looking, I'm, I'm watching Ant's Pants and he gets a lot of Weaver stuff. And then when this came around, I thought that, okay, I should probably, you know, try this brand. And I think this is probably one of their smallest unit. And uh, well, you can see the specs here. And uh, so this was, I think, 40 bucks and um, it looks really decent. So it has a, you know, a cover and then it has a, uh, this small thing. I think this is like a tea leaf holder. So this is good for, um, you know, cleaning small bits, which you don't want to fall in. And there is this plastic thing. I can, I think you can uh, wrap jewelry around this one to clean jewelry. And then of course it has this uh, bath or basket and then you put the water here everything is stainless steel it is very nice construction it feels you know very you know solid and then you have a couple of things on the front so basically you turn it on and you can set the time and then you start and that's pretty much it and uh, i used it a couple of times it definitely works it does the job and um, yeah i mean definitely i want to clean pcbs with this this is why i bought a small model I'm not really sure what else I'm going to use it. I mean, I cleaned a few juries and watches and they definitely work, uh, but I didn't really have anything which was really, really nasty. So the results were not, you know, particularly, um, I would say, um, you know, really surprising, but it definitely works. It, it gets those, you know, for example, from the watch, it really, uh, you know, cleans those small details and then stuff. So, yeah, it was fine. I am quite like it. So besides this whole thing, there is this Europe, well, not European, the EEC plug. So you get a, well, my one uh, is a European model. So it has a European plug or cable with it. And the other thing I really liked about this Weaver is, um, especially if, well, I'm pretty sure it's the same if you live in the US, but if you live in Europe, they must be serving this from a European um, warehouse because I, I placed the order over the weekend and I think I received it on next Wednesday. So this is great, especially if you, you know, buy something uh, more expensive because uh, if it's shipped from Europe, uh, you, won't, in, you don't have to pay tax for it. So I definitely haven't paid any additional tax or um, you know duty for this device. And if I just quickly change the view, so that's the uh, thing, and that's that's the listing. So you can see it's uh, you know 0.8 liter ultrasonic welder, welder a uh, cleaner, and um, yeah, it's nice. I can recommend. I think it was a good purchase. I don't really know what you should be looking for in an ultrasonic cleaner. I think some models can also heat up the water, but uh, it's a really small unit. I'm probably going to use it indoors anyway. So if I really need to, I can preheat the water. Uh, and um, 
yeah so I will keep using this um, I think it was a good purchase so next thing which I should look oh, okay actually let's let's look at this one so uh, change the view again where is my cursor so I have a well actually let me show you this one so in order to film especially trains and some of the other, other stuff I got this uh, Joby um, clamp which has the tripod mount on the top and I mean this is really nice but in some cases it is a little bit big so you know and the and there is some restrictions how you can turn these arms and of course this handle and everything sometimes is really uh, difficult to get it mounted especially on my you know ride on trains so I thought I should buy something else which is still a little bit smaller and this I think it's a little bit smaller and the clamping mechanism is slightly different so I think it would be oh what's the gunk here so it will be easier to to clamp this uh, in certain scenarios and everything is metal so it feels really solid you can um, clamp it especially over a pipe what I felt that um, you, you see it has this rubber feet inside the clamp so if these rubber feet would feet would extend beyond this uh, jaw I think it would be it would be much better to clamp on um, you know flat steel the edge of the flat steel because here then you know the the uh, the end of the jaw clip clips uh, uh, clamps on the steel and not the rubber so that's not ideal but if you are going to clamp it for you know to a pipe or anything thicker then I think it should be fine and of course you have another release clamp here and then that means that you can just move this around you know um, oriented whatever way you want and then you secure it and everything is secured and uh, for the GoPro I had to have this extension on because it has it just has a tripod mount um, so yeah I think it's great I'm definitely going to use it so probably next summer once I go with my um, ride on trains you will see the footage which was made for, uh, with this one and um, it was this guy here so 1688 I think that's how much I paid for it no 1620 was on the sale price and probably some you know discounts with the 1111 sales and oh, this seems to be on super deal uh, as well actually there are a few different models or very you know similar models but uh, this looked nice I think it was you know reasonably priced uh, again probably it's best if you want to clamp it on pipes and stuff but um, I like it so the next one ah, actually let's go with the with this view or you know whatever the next listing was this a torch uh, battery tester I have used it once or twice and um, uh, so this is a battery tester so it is a constant constant current load so you can set this up into well you can see the clamps here so there is, it comes with an accessory which uh, clumps to these terminals and then it gives you like USB connections if you want to test anything USB and then it has several connect, it has separate connections for load and separate connections for the, the voltage sensing. I mean this is the lazy setup where you're just using one single cable and uh, it, it also comes with an adapter because that's there is a 12 volt plug there and when you set it up you can configure it to you know be in constant current constant voltage you can configure it for uh, how long it should operate you can configure it for a cutoff voltage so it is really good for testing batteries and that sort of stuff and then at the same time it's going to measure milliamp hours watt hours, hours um, so all the statistics there is a port here you can attach a temperature sensor so you can monitor temperature as well um, it has a couple of buttons it's you know fairly easy to configure and it also has a USB output and it also has Bluetooth and it comes with a simple app um, I mean there is an Android and the iOS app maybe I should I can show you here and um, I mean pretty much all the app does it just gets the data the, the you know the screen values over so you can see you can monitor it on your phone as well and then it, it, it also grew, uh, draws a, a graph um, but that's pretty much it I mean it's not a, you know it's not a really sophisticated app but again if you are um, you know away uh, from this device and you want to monitor it 
I mean, you know, within Bluetooth range, you can do that. And uh, I mean, Atoch has quite, a, you know, some nice stuff. I'm watching Julian Elet's uh, channel as well, and then he uses some of these, and they have a lot of different models. So this D24 is a um, load tester up to 120 watts, and you can see the specs here. Yeah, that's voltage to 200 watts. Uh, sorry, volts, and the current is up to 20 amps. So you know, batteries, that sort of stuff, power banks, um, power stations, well, power stations, not really, but okay. So power banks, batteries, uh, it will be ideal. And I'm planning to use it for, you know, testing batteries. I have a lot of like old lead acid batteries I want to test. Uh, I want to see if there is any option to maybe revive them by, you know, cycling through different modes. So you can see the different adapters that gets um, shipped with it. So there's a USB cable, there is an adapter and, um, yeah, so far so good. It works fine. I'm quite happy with this. And I think I paid, yeah, 34.66. So that was that was the price uh, which I was happy to pay for a piece of kit that I can use occasionally. And by the way, I have a really small one which I paid ages ago and used it a couple of times. So this is just a USB dash. And I think this is this is good enough for two amps. It's just a manual tester and I've only used it a couple of times so it's not like you need these uh, a lot but yeah from time to time okay that was the battery tester so let's see what's next oh okay so the next one is going to be this guy over here so this is not electronics this is a soap dispenser from a um, sort of like an unknown brand and um, yeah, it was on sale. That's that's all I can tell you about it. And uh, it was um, it was it looked good, and it has a screen. I paid twenty quid for this one. Sorry, twenty twenty USD for this one. And um, yeah, and I think the other reason I bought this one because this makes um, foam and. Um, so I'm going to add some videos here because it's already mounted on the um, on the uh, on the bathroom, and it works. It comes with a, a with a horrible English documentation. Uh, maybe I can show you some you know pieces from the documentation, couple of pages. But really, the only thing that you need to do is uh, you need to set up the clock. And then once the clock is set up, I think the only um, sort of like uh, caveat is that if you want to do soap if you buy this normal you know dish um, uh, dish soap which is sort of like uh, I mean this is what you do in the uh, putting I mean we have this pump thingy this soap dispenser so they have to be diluted because uh, that's the only way it can make the foam so the ones that I usually get from the refill box I had to like dilute it to like two times and I think Maybe I can show you here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Maybe you can pause and read some of the instructions. It's very, it's very interesting English. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. But um, what I also like about it, uh, it has two motion sensors. So it has one motion sensor on the front uh, where you can, let me just close this back. So it has two motion sensors, one, more, one motion sensor on the front, which uh, turns on the display. And it's quite interesting because the display turns off after like five seconds. So it's not all going to be on for long. And there is a separate motion sensor which only triggers once you place your hand under the device. And um, can we ask for a focus? And um, so, and it never triggered um, incorrectly. So it works and it has a knob so you can um, control the amount of soap that you want to dispense and that's it it does its job the temperature sensors always shows a higher temperature than what's uh, really the room temperature but yeah that's fine and that was the guy so it was a little bit cheaper than this well definitely doesn't work 68 quid and um, as you can see from the videos it's quite a chunky beast 
um, so I'm guessing it will hold a lot of soap before it uh, it runs out and then it also has this um, you can see it here um, this thing which you put on the um, on the tiles and then you slide this unit on and you can just easily slide it off if you need to refill it so it just makes it really easy I think it's a very thought through uh, product and it looks like you can get it in several colors as well I got the white one and it has this uh, gold bezel which wouldn't be my choice but anyway so that was this what's next okay let's look at this product and um, yeah, so that was that was definitely an impulse purchase and something which is probably not going to be the best purchase mostly because you know it's sort of like a retro gaming device uh, which means that it would be more a present to myself but I actually bought it for the kids but the problem with retro games with you know the kids nowadays is that it won't be able to compete with any of the iPads and the uh, phones that they have at the moment and they don't really feel nostalgia for the retro stuff anyway so I don't think it will get used a lot but this is how it looks like uh, it's quite neat it's a very simple design the buttons are a little bit crusty I should say you know, d-pads and the three buttons and um, there are two thumb switches on the back as well and uh, there is a TF card slot, volume control, there is a old mini USB for a gamepad. I'm not really sure what gamepad it can do. It actually has a TV output like composite TV and, uh, and micro USB for charging and a power and a reset. And it does a lot of things other than gaming like you can play videos and sounds and uh, yeah some other stuff as well and it has a couple of emulations so you can see that it runs a few different console types so if i go up to oops uh, oh and you could set the language to hungarian and it's a very crusty hungarian translation but um yeah <laughs> it was funny to see okay so that's games and um so you can see that these are the emulations so um SFC, MD, NES, MAME, uh, GBA, and GBC. Oh, and CPS, and FC, and GB, and SMC, and SMD. And there are a bunch of games in, e in each of these categories. And um, yeah, so I haven't really played around with a lot with this one. Uh, and I can definitely feel that once you go into the game, sometimes the the audio gets a little bit choppy yes, especially when it loads the game so probably it's like um, you know really optimized for the processor maybe they could have used a better processor and uh, okay I just opened a, a random game and start Oh, no. Why is it done Chinese? Anyway. So it's definitely playable. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, um, yeah, it just, I'm just not sure if it's going to be used a lot. So we'll see, we'll see. I think maybe I'm going to just um, take it to my to our, our uh, summer cottage. And especially if the internet is gone, then, you know, they have some games that they can play offline or, you know, take it to the beach and, uh, uh, and you know, maybe play with other kids, um, like sharing consoles and playing some simple, you know, platform games. Um, yeah, but definitely there are so much of these different consoles. So there was the sort of like the 26 USD range and sort of like for twice as much money, um, there was another console which had like HDMI output and, uh, you know, a lot of extra features, almost like a Switch, but still plays like retro games, but obviously, you know, better finish, uh, more game support. But again, 
I suspected that it's not going to be like a main gaming device, so I didn't want to spend a lot more on this one. As you can see, you get a USB cable and you also get a cable which plugs into the TV output and then it breaks out to composite uh, video and RCA audio. So it's not bad. I mean, it's definitely if, um, I mean, you know, especially if you have a kid who hasn't played with iPads and, you know, more uh, uh, normal, well, sorry, not more normal, but modern phones, then, um, you know, there's plenty of games on this one. And, uh, you know, it runs on batteries. The controls are decent. It's not the best, but uh, I don't think it's a bad, you know, first gaming device. It's... Uh, I will see how they, you know, what the, the initial reactions are going to be. I don't think it's going to be overwhelming, but let's see. We are going away for um, for the New Year's Eve and are going to be with other kids. So maybe I'm going to tell them just to bring it to with the other kids and they can play around with it. Oh, there are some artwork here which shows the extra controller that it can be used. So maybe you can just place it and use the, the controller to control a game. Or maybe it's... I don't think it will be. Maybe it's a, that's the extra control is for you know two-player mode. That could be fun. Okay, let's look at the listing. Um, yeah, I didn't pay thirty for this one. I the I think I paid. Let's go back to the order. I think it was twenty something. Okay, twenty six sixty five. And um, yeah, that's so it looks like that's the sort of like a highly um, slightly increased price for sort of like normal times you can you know three different colors and you know you can read the listings how many things it can emulate and yeah sort of a lot of other stuff but I think I've shown you the uh, the basics already it's a retro gaming console looks cool next one uh, I don't think I have to talk too much about this one. Um, I'm watching Quindor's channel as well. Not all of the videos because I don't use too many LEDs, but uh, he does some really good stuff. And actually, I, I like his mailbags a lot because uh, he buys some really good stuff and he buys a lot of clothing stuff. So I thought maybe I should, you know, try some clothing and I found these uh, socks and sort of like funky colors and it was 10 quid for a pack of five maybe it's not going to last long but I have some other these you know f funky socks which don't last long either and probably I paying that much for two pairs so we'll see um, socks that's all it's not much else I can talk about that uh, okay another game I think this was a better purchase than the previous one uh, because um, yeah, so I have seen, I think I've seen this on TikTok and um, it's these bubble thingy thingy games, what is it called? So, uh, okay, can we have some focus please? So you have these bubbles and then you can pop them and they come back and I thought that the the action which puts them back is going to be some sort of uh, internal mechanism, some servos, but actually there is this big blue thing that you can push and that basically just resets all the all the bubbles. And um, there are a couple of games here, so like typical memory games, and uh, so you have to repeat the you know the patterns and. Uh, if you manage to do that, then you can go to the next level and that sort of stuff. I think it's going to be... Welcome to the puzzle game. you get the idea so there are different games here I haven't played this game I played the other game which uh, lights up buttons in uh, in sequence and you have to repeat the sequence 
and then it starts with one and two and then three and four and then so on. Um, so I think it's fun um, and it's uh, because of the sort of the you know the mechanical thing it's it's uh, unusual I mean it's not like a video game um, I'm really interested how my kids like this one again if we are going in a group I think it's going to be a nice uh, a cool group play item so let me just put this away the box is not in the best condition but hey ho and um, let me just put this away and change the view so we can look at the listing and okay five quid so it wasn't much um, really and I yeah 552 that's how much I paid for it so it was I think it was good the next one carpenter pencils um, as you can see it was uh, 224 uh, 272 um, I think um, the um, sort of the the need for this is going up because uh, I can see a lot of these 199 deals on this one but um, they are all sold out so I think probably they are just um, you know like decoy listings so you buy the next price up which is the you know 279 299 stuff and so I I've already purchased one of these and uh, I quite like it so this is the first time I'm using these carpenter pens and I thought I buy another one uh, but I buy the, the version which has the different color um, LEDs in it and I thought that maybe the um, uh, this yellow one is going to be good on metal so instead of using the the white ink I can use this one but um, it's really thin it's not really visible um, I guess it's it's okay it's not the best so we'll see if I can use this one because otherwise I'm not really sure if the especially the yellow one is very useful because it's not going to be much visible on uh, wood either so obviously for wood you I would use the black one maybe I can use the red for something but I wanted to try out so I have I have a blue one which has uh, black red and I have this one which I mean I can use any of the colors but uh, I will test these out and then you know see how they work so that was the carpenter pencils okay next one oh I forgot to bring these one in so we are just going to look at the listing and um, Ages ago, I bought these um, small box which contains uh, nylon sets like standoffs and screws and nuts. And I always run out of the nuts, so I wanted to get more M3 nuts. So I purchased this lot. This is the M3, sorry, not M5, M3. And um, I need just nylon screws and I ran out of them, so I needed more. So I, I bought this one. So that was it. Next one is uh, this guy here it's uh, well I think we are an unusual family because I have Android and my wife has iPhone and I wanted a cable that we can put in a car because we only have one connection for the Android Auto slash uh, CarPlay so I wanted so I at the moment um, like a lightning cable is plugged in and I wanted something which has a lightning uh, for the older iPhones and the USB-C for my um, Samsung and uh, I'm hoping that this one is going to do the job it's a fairly chunky piece if you look at this, um, it's um, I haven't even opened it. So it's a uh, you know a nice chunky bit. The colors look a little bit weird on this camera, but um, uh, I think I put the um, the lights all the way to the max but this is not neon this is just like rubber and uh, you have these metal ish Chinese metal feel ends I'm not really sure if it's really required um, you know necessary or not but you can see it comes with micro USB USB C and lightning uh, all in one so that's going to be good for the car and I don't think it supports high charging current but in the car I don't really need that anyway so um, that's going to be yeah that's going to be fine how much was it three quid so oh it says uh, six watt six amps 
120 volts. I mean, it's definitely chunky, but uh, other than that, I'm not really sure about the quality. But again, the car doesn't really charge more than one and a half amps, maybe two, but um, that's not really a point anyway. So I think it's, it's going to be fine. Okay, let's close this one. Oh, okay. I forgot to bring this one in, but um, it's a pencil sharpener. It's a elect not electronic, mo motorized pencil sharpener. So it runs on four batteries, and this is the type which uh, rotates the the blade. Uh, because I think there are, you can get two types, one that rotates the blade and the other one which has this conical grinding wheel which rotates around the, uh, the, uh, the tip of the pencil. And I'm not really sure which one is, the, which one is better, but um, you know, this was sort of a good price. I thought I'd give it a go and um, so far it's working fine. You have to be a really bit careful as you lower in the pencil because if you try to push it uh, too aggressively, then uh, in some cases it happened one or two times that it binds into the uh, the wood and then it, you know, breaks a chunk out, which then blocks the um, the sharpener. But you can easily take remove it and then clean it. And uh, it has two sort of like holes: one for smaller pencil and the bigger one for bigger pencil. And the bigger hole has this uh, finger protect thing, so you have to slide out. And as soon as you lower the pencil in, it starts working. So. Pencil sharpener. Okay. Uh, yeah, I forgot to bring these ones in as well. Um, I always need these uh, double-sided prototyping boards for smaller jobs and I was running out from a few various sizes. So I just ordered um, my the ones that I usually use. So actually, I think I ordered five different sizes, probably these five sizes that you can see on the screen now. And um, I think, yeah, it's five, five a piece. I, I think I ordered, no, no, I ordered ones which are 10 a piece and that should last me a couple of years. So that's fine. It's nothing special. I previously, I had them uh, um, green, but now I have them blue. So the final set of products are going to be centered around uh, trains, garden trains, and the smaller ones, so the gauge one trains, uh, because I ordered a couple of stuff uh, to create my own um, wheel sets and uh, driving tr uh, driving trucks and bogies and that sort of stuff. So I'm just going to quickly go through these listings and then I'm going to show you the actual products. So I'm not sure if I end up using these, but um, if I ever need some uh, bushings or yeah, it says bushing, then um, I ordered these and I found this seller which makes these really small bushings and uh, you can see that um, you can buy them for 2 mm or 3 mm shafts. So the internal diameter is 205 or 255 or 305. So they either fit the 2 mm, 2.5 or 3 mm shaft. And so there I purchased one for two millimeter and I think one for three millimeters. So this is why I have to, well, they are exactly the same listing. I just put, um, you know, bought the, uh, the different variants. And this was, if I can find it, yeah. So that was the order and how much I paid for this. Okay, it wasn't really cheap, but um, I mean, these are brass stuff. So, you know, the price of the material is not cheap. So that was one thing. And then I also, got some uh, steel rods for Excel and for this I got so this these are the two millimeters one and I got uh, I think it's the 26 millimeter long and two millimeter in diameter uh, basically it pins but I use them as shafts and I also got uh, three times 60 and that's going to be the main Excel for the wheels and I already have a prototype uh, uh, bearing housing or driving truck um, model and for that I needed some cogs so I have this cog here which I already have a few but the the drivetrain seems to be working fine I still have to uh, tweak the 3d printed model but um, I think the you know these uh, are going to be fine so this is one of the drivetrains uh, sorry the drive um, pinions and, and gears, and that's another type, 
and this is the pinion which goes onto the motor and okay that's it so let's go back to here so these are which you can see here well these are not from aliexpress but i have a friend who has a cnc machine shop and they and he makes um you know truck parts i think suspensions and that sort of stuff and um well, he has some really big machines. So I've been asking him to make me some wheels for, I don't know, ages. And it took such a long time because we were looking for really small drill bits to make the, um, you know, the press fit hole sizes and everything. But then we managed to do everything. So he, he made like, you know, hundreds of these and I have another hundred, which is a slightly smaller diameter. So I think this is the bigger diameter that would be for locos and the smaller diameter is going to be for, uh, for wagons. And you can see the various bits and pieces that I just showed you. So these are the brass bushings, the different sizes. They come in this packaging. It's, uh, it's really nice. So I have this um, big box where I usually keep this stuff. So I think I'm just going to remove it from packaging. And these are the various gear sets. So the different, um, this is going to be a drivetrain on the axle, which uh, just have a shaft. And then I have the middle gear, which has a smaller gear and a bigger gear. And this is the small pinion gear, which goes into the motor. And I think in one of my, my earlier post bag, we bring the focus back to the table now. That's better. Um, I already showed, showed these parts and I just basically reordered the same. So this is the intermediate shaft for the intermediate gear and that's, the, uh, that's for the axle. And actually let me give you the drive, uh, show you the drivetrain as well. So I didn't make the 3D model, so there is a chap in Australia who made these for himself and then he put the models online and I downloaded the model and um, you see the, uh, the motor here which has the small pinion gear which has uh, here and then there is an intermediate shaft uh, with a single reduction and then it goes for another reduction which drives the, uh, drives the actual wheels. And the 3D printing is not perfect, it's a little bit noisy, I have to drill out the holes, so probably what I need to experiment with is to uh, try increase the hole sizes in the 3D drawing so it comes, it prints the exact size uh, on my 3D printer. Um, so the, I mean, the problem at the moment is I think it's a little bit weak and a little bit noisy because I had to drill out some of the holes and I probably could not drill out the exact size. Probably I drilled bigger size, which means that the, uh, you know, the center shaft is a little bit loose. So these really fine um, gears are not meshing correctly or there is a lot of, you know, play in the whole drivetrain. So uh, I understand 3D printing is probably not ideal for this application, but I'm going to have a few other goes because uh, if he managed to do it, I should be able to figure out what would be the right printing parameters and the right sort of like oversized holes that prints to the exact dimensions that I need. And I already have a lot of gears, so I've already committed to this project anyway. So just have to see this through. We almost clear the tables. Let me just show, uh, let me just close all the listings that uh, we have looked already so far. And I think we all, we only have this one left. And um, I needed a USB charger for my desk, um, which can charge the few devices that I have here because uh, I had one which is plugged into the wall and I really wanted something which stands on a desk. And also I wanted something which has this new, you know, high power um, USB-C standard because then I can use this to also power my laptop because I have one fixed uh, USB-C charger which goes through the docking station. But if I also want to use my second laptop or my work laptop, then um, I don't want to have to take out this charging cable so I can just quickly charge into this unit. So I was looking around. I um, I have a lot of, well, not a lot of, I have a few bases stuff, but I find bases a little bit on the expensive side. So I was looking for something cheaper and I already have a charging cable from two key or I'm not really sure how it's pronounced. So this came through in one of the listing. It was sort of the, you know, the okay price. I wonder how much 
yeah, 37.68. So that's how much I pay for it. It's a little bit more expensive now. And it does 140 watts total, and it has a free USB-C and two USB-A. And you can see in the description, sorry, in the uh, in the chart, what are the different modes that it supports. And it's uh, it's fairly small. It has a stand, uh, but um, it has a certain weight to in uh, to it. So it stands on the um, on the desk quite firmly, and still it is you know fairly small. So. Uh, that was the the main reason I bought it. Of course, I didn't know the size before it arrived, but uh, this was one of the things which arrived fairly quickly as well. Let me just disconnect the the power cable. Let me disconnect everything else. So this is how this guy looks like. It comes in this charging, sorry, in this stand, and it has a simple connector on the back, so you can just. Uh, even if you get the wrong cable, you can just uh, swap it. And um, it is universal voltage. So if you like this, you can take this around. If you are traveling around the world, you just need a separate cable, which uh, terminates in this figure eight connection, very common. And that's the front. So three USB-Cs and two USB-As. And as you can see, well, you can see it on mine, but you can see on the listing that there is a small screen on the top, which actually so shows the total power. which actually shows the total power output on all five ports. Um, that's nice. So I can see that it is definitely delivering the power that is required for the laptop. And as I said, it runs my laptop without any issues. So it already does at its main job. And I have a, I'm, I'm using the USB-A's as well. And it comes with a USB-C cable. So this USB-C cable that actually came with the device and um, that can definitely deliver 60 something watts, which uh, my laptop requires. So it works fine. And with this, I think the, the desk is almost clear. We managed to go through all the items. That will be all for today. It's already a quite long video. And this is already, well, not all of the stuff that I purchased on 11.11, but it's, I think it's mostly uh, most of the stuff that I purchased. So still, it's still going to be a follow-up in, in, in January. But until then, I think that will be all for today. If you are interested in any of these, you, I'm going to include the links in the video description. But uh, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.